Okay, I'm recording it. Don't say anything bad about Andrea because she'll hear it. Okay. And they've been through three dimensional. Um, I don't know. Have you been to through? Um, it, by the way, this is really a, a good meeting because I usually reach out to people to do this uh, three dimensional planning, which is allows you f through all the different departments or groups that you have to find any crossovers, commonalities, gaps. I don't think we've done a 3D planning yet. I think we typically wait for about a month after the um, performance monitoring training. So, right. okay, let's talk about um, what we can do from the administrator's point of view. So you guys are all org admin users. Uh, so you're the only ones who'll be able to do these things here. So we're gonna skip past this. So here's kind of the functions we'll talk about. Uh, the, the overall settings and configuration, uh, simple stuff mostly. Uh, managing users, this is the big one. Uh, managing user permissions, what they can see, what they can do. Uh, categories and subcategories. So we'll talk a little bit about this, but this is what we'll go into in a three-dimensional planning. So we'll probably not get uh, too deep into it today. Um, administrator document management. So you can attach documents anywhere in the system. And then as administrators, you have the capability to go in and look at all the documents that are in the system. Uh, under a specific plan or a specific group. Uh, where this is typically used is during the accreditation process. If you're using the accreditation project plan and you attach all the documents in there and you want to look and see which documents do I have attached where in the plan. Uh, and then the ability to export data is real simple, but uh, you can export any data in the system, including the entire system, uh, into a .csv file, which can be uh, brought into Excel. So. Let's start out with the settings and configurations. So I'm going to go back to your organization here. Uh, to get to settings and configuration, go up to the main menu up here in the top, the gray one, and then down here to settings. I know it's real cryptic, but there's where it is. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing you have up here are the, uh, the and this is stuff that uh, basically only I can change, the number of user licenses you have. So you have 25 licenses and you're using 25 of them here. Uh, account type, live or inactive, your account expiration date, um, and then the top level group. So you, you're going to establish in the department very, you know, almost all the time it's the department level, that level one group, uh, but you can change that if necessary. Down here, you've got the ability to change the uh, report headers and the uh, logo. Um, typically, I like to do that because I, I shrink the uh, um, graphics down to see the 100 pixel here and 800 pixel there. Uh, you can right click on it and clear it if you want to, if you got to put a new one in, but uh, it's easiest just send it to me here. Um, admin activate partners. So when you enter new partners in the system, anybody can enter it at any, any user level can enter partners. So they can enter partner organizations and the contacts, but only you guys can actually activate them. So here's what happens. Um, somebody enters a partner in there it's not activated. That means when you go to the uh, activity screen and you select the partners, they won't show up on the list. Once you guys click the activate button on there, then they'll show up on the list. The idea there was, and, and the reason it came from here at uh, in Arizona, Arizona Department of Health Services uh, was ADHS. Their website is AZDHS. And we had somebody going in there and basically putting duplicate partners in there just because they didn't understand somebody else had put the partners in there. So that's why we have that. And you can turn that on or off whether you want to do it or not. Uh, inactivity timeout. So what this says is if you're online and not doing, not touching anything for 50 minutes, it'll time you out. Uh, the default plan level can be any level in the pyramid services, goals, objectives, and activities. Typically, we leave it at objectives. But if you wanted to make sure that every report that you go to goes all the way to the activity level, initially, you can do that. Uh, or you can just... Um, uh, set it to, to objectives, and when you get to the report, you just click on the activities tab up there. And then this one down here is, is something that uh, we've kind of turned off for now because there's a few issues around having multiple activity leads. So you can have multiple email notifications at the activity level, but only one lead in there. So that's the, uh, the, the main settings here. Now, notifications. You guys currently have notifications turned off, and this is the real-time planning email notifications. So I can say I'm going to turn those on here. And then what I'm going to do is select when do I want them to go out. So here's your choices here. Uh, you got week one, two, three, four of the month. So during that week, uh, week one and three or two and four. So every other week, uh, every week. So you can get a notification going out every week. 
you can say the last day of the month. So it'll always pick the, you know, the 28th of February and 30th, whatever, uh, and or a specific day of the month. So you can say on the 15th of every month, we're going to send them out. So if I selected week one, right now I have selected week one on Monday. Uh, that means it's only going to go out on Monday. But I could also say I wanted them to go out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's going to have three times in that week. Or if I said every every week, it's going to have three times every week. So most people set them for uh, the typical setting is one of the weeks of the month. A lot of times it's the first week of the month. Uh, a lot of times it's like Wednesday instead of Monday. The reason is that people are just coming back from a weekend. Uh, you know, they're going to be catching up on other things. So you give them a day or two to do that. So, but you can set it anywhere you want. Uh, now, down here, we have why are the emails going to go out? And you can turn these on and off as you want to. The most common one to turn off is if you're not really worried about people doing it every 30 days, then you could turn this off. So what this is saying, if this person has not been in in the last 30 days and done the update, they're going to get an email. The one next to it says, if you have any activities that are calculated to be behind schedule, uh, and that calculation is beginning date, ending date, and percent complete. So if you're halfway through the year and you're 50% complete and it's a, an annual cycle, uh, you're on track. If you're halfway through the year on an annual cycle and you're only 40% complete, you're behind schedule. So that's how that works. And then overdue just says that I have an activity that the ending date is before today and it's not marked as 100% complete. So again, you can turn all of these you know, on and off however you want to do it here. Most people leave all three of them on here, but some people say, you know, I don't really care if it's every 30 days, if they know it's behind schedule or it's overdue, they're going to do the update. So that's kind of up to you guys. So, and you can play with this. And by the way, as soon as you change it, the next cycle for the the meet or the invitations that go out uh, will be changed. So it's it's immediate when you change it here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off for now, and you guys can turn that on anytime you want, and it takes effect immediately when you do that. Uh, partner types is really not something we use too much anymore. If you're entering partners and you want to organize them by type, you can add a partner type in here, and it's just going to give you a, uh, you know, it could be a state level partner, it could be a private sector partner, whatever you want, but it, it hasn't really been used much. Synonyms is kind of a new niche function in here. So this is the different levels of the pyramid, the organization, the group, service, initiative, goal, objective, and activity. If on a report, let's say I had a state report that I had to do, and they had their own nomenclature that you had to follow, I can change that in here. So if, for instance, I wanted to have um, activity be action step, what's going to happen when I generate a report, instead of it saying activity 1.1.1.1, it's going to say action step 1.1.1. Same thing with the VMSD public. Uh, the public-facing web page is also going to pick up these uh, synonyms as well. So it, it doesn't affect really anything as you're entering data, but as you're outputting data, uh, to a report or to VMSD public, this is where it's going to be uh, shown here. And that is the the basic settings um, today. Any questions on anything that I've gone through here on settings? Pretty simple. Yeah, can you start right just at the very top to see how you navigated to the settings? Oh, OK, function? sure. Uh, up here in the top right, we call these the quick links. So you've got the dashboard screen, you got the um, reports menu screen in the blue, the gray one is the main menu, and then the uh, help and information and the logout. So I go to the main menu, the gray one in the top middle here, and then down here to the settings button down here. That do it? Okay, okay. Uh, so that is the uh, the overall system settings here. Let's go back now and look at user management. This is the, the one that you use more than anything else here. So user management, again, back to the main menu and then down here to users. So uh, you'll see some of these are grayed out. Uh, when the user is grayed out, it's this little uh, active user down here is disabled. So when you guys get people who leave the organization, uh, you just contact me. I, you, you guys don't have the ability to inactivate users or activate them, I do. Uh, but what that allows you to do is just uh, deactivate a user without taking them out. And for doing that, it, it keeps all the data that they have uh, created in the system and everything that they've done in the system. So that way you can go back if you need to and look at it. 
And if you ever have that situation where you deactivated a user and then you want to go back and look at where that user was connected and whatever, just uh, email me and I'll activate them temporarily for you. So let's look at, let me see here. We Okay, so here we have um, Sarah Bossy, Bosey, um, as the uh, org admin user here. Now let's look at the different fields here. So the username is typically it's first name dot last name. So Sarah dot Bossy, uh, first name, last name. Uh, you can go in and change. If you're an org admin, you can change this person's um, password just by clicking on the key button here. It'll give you the, the old password and you put in the new password. You can change it for them. They can also go to that, you know, using the send button to go to login.vmsg-board.com and get their password. Uh, and then they, on the main menu, there's a password link. You can always change it as well. But if, if you want to change it for somebody, uh, for some reason, you have the ability as an org admin to change it here. You're going to put in their title uh, within the organization, their email address, their phone number. Uh, the, the org will be the same always. It's going to be your uh, department. But then what you're going to do is give them a default group. So a lot of people default to the department, especially if I'm the health director or something like that. But you may have people who are just uh, like somebody is defaulting to the strategic plan. What that means is when they log in, they're going to go to that default group. So they don't have to navigate anywhere else. That's what that's all about. Um, who do they report to? In this case, she's reporting to herself because she's the health director in here. So the health director typically reports to themselves. But I can do a drop down here and pick anybody in the in the group that they report to. So this is the, the reporting hierarchy. Then you got the different types of users here. I'll go over those in a minute, the different uh, levels and what they do here. But you got the different types of users. Most people are normal users, just call them users. Uh, there's manager users, which have a little bit more permission, org admin users like yourself. Uh, and then there's also partner and read-only users. Again, I'll go into that in a few minutes here. Um, <clears throat> over here, the uh, org links button, um, unless you guys had multiple organizations, which some of our departments do, you'll just have the one link in there, so it won't really mean anything. Group links, however, let me uh, get off here so I don't save that. Uh, the group links button says, what groups does this person have access to? So I'll click on that. And you'll see over here, uh, Sarah has access to everything. You see the two columns. View is read-only access, just view only. And then edit means that this person can edit uh, anything down in that group. A lot of times you're going to have view for everybody so they can see the whole uh, department, but only edit specific things. So maybe if that person is responsible for the strategic plan, they might just have the strategic plan um, enabled here to edit and everything uh, unchecked over here for editing. So that gives that gives you the control to be able to give people group. If you want them to just see the strategic plan but not touch anything in there, you give them view only access to the specific plans in there. Admin links <clears throat> in the email notification that you get. Uh, let me take you there real quick. So this is the email notification. Down here, there is, uh, if you have any questions, please contact your system administrator. This is where we set that. That is this button right down here. So anybody who's an org admin will have administrator links on here. Um, let me go down to Brian here. Let's pick on Brian today, OK? Uh, so you're the org admin. Uh, admin link says, when that email goes out, which person is going to show up down there where I just showed you? Right now, Brian, you're not showing up for anything. Typically, you'll have at least two people uh, with all of these checked here so that if an email goes out for any of these groups, uh, your name is going to show up down at the bottom in there. So you guys can go in there and, and set that any way you want it. Sometimes you're going to split it. So you might have um, just the chip uh, is responsible to Brian and um, uh, maybe Maribel would be responsible for the strategic plan or something like that. So when the emails go out, uh, that's what comes out for them there. So that's what you're doing with uh, the admin links button. Again, it's setting what shows up right down here in the emails that go out uh, for the real-time planning. Uh, let's see here. 
Okay, so that the the users is is the one that you'll be messing with the most in there. After you set up a user in the system, oh, I didn't I didn't go through the adding a user. Uh, to add a user is real simple. You're going to first pick their boss. So whoever that leader reports to. So let's go to Sarah. So Sarah is the, the leader. When I do that and I hit the plus button, it opens up the fields down here so I can put in the information. But what it does is by default reports to the person that I've selected, in this case, Sarah. So, and, and by the way, you can change that. That's just the easiest way to go about doing it. And then you're going to add all this information in there, determine what type of user they are, uh, save it. And then if you want to go back and tweak the group permissions, you can go into the group permissions and do that. If they're an org admin, you can tweak the uh, admin link permissions and stuff. But real simple, um, this is th this is all over here. This is uh, something that I have access to that you guys wouldn't normally have access to. So it's going to automatically um, activate that user in the system. Now to, to get their to get their login credentials, you send them to the the link lo uh, login.vmsg-board.com. They'll hit the send button, put in their email address, hit send again. It'll send them an email with the login credentials that you've established. Now, when I add a new user, the password is set automatically by default. It's a bunch of crazy cryptic characters. So either you can go in and change it if you wanted to, or uh, they can go in and change it once they get in there. So they can just go to the, the main menu here and hit the password button, or in the quick update screen on the top, there's a set of keys up there too that you can get to. So that is your user management here. Any questions on any of those things? No? Okay. Let's go talk about categories and subcategories. Now, three-dimensional planning is the ability to assign categories and subcategories to any planning element. And the reason for that is that I want to put them in groups, but I want to be able to put it across all the different plans. So let's go look at an example here. Uh, let's go to your, um, let's go to the training plan, the Tobacco 2024 training plan. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go down to my tobacco cessation. And this is the little button for categorization right here. You see the little paper clip on the uh, up arrow. When I click on that, I've got a set of categories over here. Uh, we need to update this. You guys got the uh, 1.5 domain. So I'll let me make a note to update that for you. I'll take care of that. Um, so what you can do is you can say, okay, these happen to be the strategic priorities from the, uh, the demo strategic plan. They're not yours. But if I wanted to assign a strategic priority number one to that planning thing, let's see, we had stakeholder engagement, partnerships. Um, yeah, we'll call it uh, reducing health disparities. So number three here. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and Click on that. It says, do you want to update the categories of all the related goals, objectives, and activities? So all the way down the pyramid. I'll go ahead and say yes. So now you'll see the little blue eye on this button indicating that it has been categorized. The three-dimensional planning training, we're going to go into great detail on that and how all that happens and, and how you use it. But to get to those categories, uh, to, you, can, you can make anything you want out of them. So I'm going to go to the main menu again, and then I'm going to go to categories down here. So on the left side are the primary categories. On the right side are the subcategories. So you notice strategic priorities has got five subcategories. Service type, and by the way, you can delete these, you can add to them, you can edit them, do whatever you want to do if you're an org admin from this screen. A lot of these people don't use, so they take them out of there. So maybe service type, you don't use it. So you got like direct service, indirect service, policy, approaches things along that line if you have requirements you know why are we doing this it's a federal law it's a state law whatever happens to be in there uh, and then you get down to the uh, fab domains and standards so i got domain one and then i got the standards for domain one down here and again i'll update these for you here so uh, what you're able to do is say these this is everything we're doing across the whole department like your strategic plan your chip related to fab domain number one in this case you'd probably be your uh, community health assessment would be related in there. So this is the category. So to add a category, or if I want to edit a category, so if I wanted to delete one of these, I can just hit the red delete button. It's going to delete the category and all the related subcategories. 
Or over here, if I just wanted to delete one of the subcategories, I can go down and delete. You get a little dialog box that you want to delete the subcategory down there. So it'll take care of that. So, uh, and, and again, to add one, if I wanted to add uh, a new one down at the bottom, I could just hit the uh, plus button. It's going to let me type in the, whatever the category is in here. Uh, you can put a number on it. So this number is your sort order. Uh, typically, when I put the new ones in here, they've got a 10 between them so that you can kind of move them around as you want. But you can change this anywhere you want. It's just a, a sort order is all it is here. And then underneath here, you can go over and change the subcategory same way. I can edit it, save it, or I can add a new one and save it down here. So again, we're going to get into a lot more detail when we go into the three-dimensional planning training. But I just wanted to let you know that this is a function of org admins only. Okay, let's see what's next here. Next is administrator document management. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have any documents attached to anything yet or not. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me go back to my demo group because I know I have some documents attached down there. Uh, USA Public Health, go to my groups. Uh, let's go to the uh fab 2022 local accreditation plan so i'm at that plan i'm going to go to the main menu and what i want to do is find all of the documents that are in that plan so i go to document management here and again only the org admins have access to it so what i'm saying is these are the two documents that i have attached to the fab 2022 local plan uh, now think about that if you're doing accreditation you're going to have hundreds of these documents so you can go in there uh, you can filter them uh, look at the status say i just want to see the gold documents uh, here, here's what most people are doing and let me show you this right here says show all versions so right now you see version one two three one two three so there's actually six documents in there uh, but the latest one is typically shown when you're using um, the document management for managing fab documents typically a yellow is a draft green is finalized at the department level gold is submitted up into the efab system so typically, the only thing you really want to see is the, the gold here. But if I had, let's say I had some documents out there that have been completed but have not been submitted into EFAB, I can do the drop-down filter here and say, just show me all the green documents. So it's going to show me every document that shows up in green. Uh, that way I can say, oops, we forgot to submit this. Go submit it up in EFAB, and you're all done with it. Um, and then where, where does the doc, where's the document attached? In this case, it's attached to a group. But you can say, I want to see documents attached to users, to organization. You can attach documents anywhere. So that's just allowing you to pick specific documents. So basically, it's just an overall uh, look at all the documents in the system, regardless of where they are. I, I can go to the, the department level, and I can look at everything in the entire department. In this case, this is the typical one, is using the FAB domain. Uh, if you have documents attached to your strategic plan, you can select that, and it's going to show you those documents in there. So that is the, uh, the, again, only you guys have access to be able to do that because you have the ability to go in and actually change some of the information around the documents and that sort of thing. Questions? Nope. I'm from me. Okay. Okay. Um, kind of the last thing we're going to go over today is data export. Anything in the system can be exported to a .csv file. .csv file, comma separated values, is what you would typically use to import into Excel. So you can export the file uh, as a .csv file, and then you can import it into Excel. Just open it in Excel, and it'll open it in Excel. Then you can save it as an XLS file. Uh, the reason for that is you might want to do some custom charts and graphs or compare some data from last year, or whatever it happens to be. So you can just put it all out into a spreadsheet. Uh, the data export function is typically you can do it at a group level. I might want to go down to my uh, tobacco plan here. And then to, to export the tobacco plan in itself, I can go to the main menu and then go down to export operational plan. And when I do that, do I want to export all the subgroups as well? Uh, I don't think there are any. I'll say no. And it should give me a... So this, this is what it looks like. Now it's obviously pretty ugly. If you do the export button down here, it's going to send it to a file. It's going to give you a choice to put a file name in there. Uh, just put in, you know, tobacco.csv. It'll save it anywhere you want to save it. And then just go double click on it. It'll open up in Excel. 
and then you can do anything you want to do with it. But it's got all of the data points in there. Uh, it's got the, the services, the goals, the objectives, the activities, uh, the status of everything, the percent complete, uh, everything you want to know, but we're afraid to ask. So feel free to play with that. You know, grab one of your plans, export it, put it into Excel and take a look because there's anything you can do in Excel you could do. So again, different kinds of charts and graphs, um, anything that you want that's not supported currently in the system you can make uh, out of an Excel file. So that's one thing you can do is uh, like exporting a group or I can go down to the service level, I can export the uh, just the tobacco cessation or I can say I just want to export reduced smoking in high schools. Now, if I get down here to the objective level and I want to export, remember we had this chart here that has the, the data here. I can export this. This is my export button right here. And if I click on that, it's going to say that's the file name that I want to save it to, bmsgexport.csv. And I will save that to a my uh, desktop and save it. And then when I open up that file, it'll probably open in Excel, I'm imagining. Slowly opening in Excel. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me uh, bring that down and put it up on the screen here. One second. Okay, so this is the uh, export in Excel. So basically, it's giving you everything you want to know, all the different uh, values in here, the percent complete, uh, who did what, when, the whole nine yards. So uh, again, you can export any of the charts or graphs that way. Save. Close that. Um, let's see what I have. Okay, same thing uh, back here at the objective level. You've got the history record. Uh, if I export the history, it's exactly the same as what I just showed you in the chart, but I can do it from either place. So if I create the history file here with all the history records in there, same thing. I've got the export button. It'll do exactly the same thing. So again, I, literally, if you wanted to, you could go to the department level and then say, when it asks you, say, yes, export all subgroups, and it'll export every piece of every plan in the entire system. I don't recommend doing that because trying to make your way through that is going to be a real pain in the butt. So, If that is the case, where we want to get a history from everything, if we don't do it that way, would you recommend going into like them individually and pulling a history yeah. report from there? Yeah, okay. probably, probably doing each group individually is the better way to do it because then you're kind of limited to that. Like I say, you can export it. It's just going to be a huge mass amount of data uh, and you, you'll work your way through it, but it's much easier just to go a piece at a time in there. Now, the other thing you can do is you can generate operational plans for anything in there. So now you have a, a plan based version of the export and then you can export the CSV file. So you can kind of compare the two. It helps you to, to put them together. That is pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Um, anything else that you'd like to see? Anything that you've run across that uh, didn't make sense? Or... I guess thinking in like the plans that we're getting ready to archive and kind of present to our uh, quality improvement committee, I mean, we're noticing that we want to pull history to see kind of what was done. Um, if, I, I, I know, and this could just be like a misunderstanding on my point. Um, will the history only, or will it only show if it's like, I, I noticed that there was like percents on some of the charts. Um, is that gonna look different on like the activity types? Will those activity types kind of dictate like what the report yeah, the, ends? The history like? looks a little bit different on different activity types. Um, so down here, this is your history file for the objective. It's going to be pretty much the same on all objectives. But the different types of activities, when I generate the history file here, uh, will can have slightly different information depending on what we're tracking in the particular activity in here. But you can you can go to all of them and get it out of there. Um, I actually think you can generate. Let me see here. If I go down to my service of tobacco cessation, go up here, and um,
for some reason I thought there was a way to generate a history file. I guess not. Okay. Um, anyhow, so th that's the uh, the history and the and the export in there. What else? I'm not sure if Brian asked this one already, but uh, would you be able to uh, give us a refresher on how to generate history reports for different sections? Uh, generate the history? That's very simple. Uh, history can be had at the, let's see, is there history? Yeah, the service goal objective level, and it's just this little uh, hourglass button down here. So if I want to look at all the, and what it is basically, Every time you save a plan element, it generates a history record. So in this case, every time we save the current status of the reduced smoking at Wayne High School, it generates a history record in here. And the history records are in reverse numerical or chronological order. So you got the latest one at the top here. Uh, these history records can be deleted. So if you accidentally get a duplicate record in there, it'll warn you if you're gonna create a duplicate record. But if you get it in there and you wanna delete it, click on the date over here, hit the uh, delete button, and it'll take it out of there. You can also, if you kind of put it in the wrong place date-wise and you want to move it like to the beginning, you can go in here and change this date down here, hit the save button, and maybe make it uh, 815 of 22, for instance. So I put that down there, it's going to move that history record down to the bottom. So you can move them. And, and the reason for doing that, the only reason really is uh, if I wanted to add historical records. So maybe I've been tracking this program before we implemented the VMSG dashboard. So I could go in here and put in whatever data was at that point in time back in, you know, 2022, whatever, save it, and then go to the history file. It'll be at the very top because it'll be the latest one. And then change this date to 630 of 2022. It'll automatically move down to the bottom of the list here. And then you have a historical record uh, from before the time you implemented the system. That's kind of the only time I've ever thought about being able to use that. And that's why we put that feature in there. Is there a way to like save it as a document that doesn't live on VMSG or does it, are we only allowed to view it through that hourglass? Um, I think for some reason, oh, I know why. Here we go. Let me go to, the, I, I was in the wrong place. There is a history report. Uh, do, 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 here it is right here. So I'm going to generate the report. Would you like to see history report for the related activities as well? I'll say objective only or all. And when I do that, it's going to generate a report that has, uh, here it is right here. So here's all your history records right here in a report format. I'm sorry, I, I was looking on the wrong menu. <laughs> You'd think I would know that, right? But, so yeah, so this is the history record for, uh, let's go to the top. So for this objective, this is the history record for that objective. And then down here in the activities, you got the history record for this first activity. It's a lot of data in there, but it is pretty much everything you ever want to know, but we're afraid to ask. And how'd you get there again? Uh, reports menu. So I'm going to select, uh, let's say I'm going to select tobacco cessation, and then I'm going to go to the reports menu, the blue one up here, and go down to um, history report. I'll click on that. And when I do that, it's going to say, uh, I must select an organization and a group. Okay, let me go back and select my group here, tobacco and tobacco cessation, and then go to the history report again. Uh, I don't know what it's doing. Oh, I must not have anything in there. So let me go back to just the goals here, reduce smoking in high schools. And it's going to give you the option of saying, I just want to see for this particular plan element or this plan element and the sub elements. This time, I'm just going to say for the goal only here. So it's going to give me the history report just for that goal. And there it is. So it's in the reports menu and you select what you want to see the history report for from wherever it is in whatever plan. And then you hit the reports menu and select history report. Does that answer your question, Mirabo? Yeah, that does. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me of that because I thought, yeah, I, I put that in there at one point in time. I didn't remember where it was. Now we know. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm old and forgetful, so that happens to me. No, no worries. Yeah, because we're kind of, uh, we, we probably have already uh, mentioned this previously, like we're at the point where we are 
inputting our new community health improvement plan, we're inputting our new strategic plan, we're kind of having our section leaders clarify what their objectives are going to be because they may not be the same ones that they've had previously and we've had sure. uh, what, different staff and people move so our idea was to use these history reports to see one what was done and then two kind of see kind of what data we were able to collect during that period of time prior to us implementing or starting to begin to track the new objectives from each of the sections um, would going the history uh, report be like the in your eyes, uh, kind of your experience with this, would that be kind of like the easiest way or do you have like another way you would advise? Well, the history report is everything that has happened to each plan element. Uh, mm -hmm. You might just want to go to the, so you guys have a bunch of archive stuff down here. We created the, uh, uh, oops, let me go back to you guys here. Uh, Madeira, okay. So you've got a bunch of archive stuff. So you got your old strategic plan in here. Uh, what you can do is generate the operational plan report for that with all the detail in it. And you're going to have pretty much everything other than each individual save that was uh, you know, made at the plan element level. But it'll tell you the status of everything, the whole nine yards. So that'd be kind of the starting point, I think, if I was doing it. And then if we wanted to go more in detail, then that's kind of where we would go further and generate a history report down the line, correct? Well, you can generate the history report from the strategic plan here. So you could go up there, generate the history report, and it'll have, and you can select every planning element all the way down to the activity level. It'll be a very, very large report, <laughs> just so you know. But it'll be organized by, uh, you know, group, service, goal, objective, and activity. And you'll just have to look and see, okay, these are all the history records for this particular activity. Gotcha. What else can I show you? Or what else can you teach me that I have? <laughs> um, I think that's kind of the point where we're at right now. Okay. Um, we're still learning to navigate and meeting with these people and kind of archiving stuff, deciding if the, the section goals are even the correct ones. Because um, it's, I don't know, I, I feel like there was like a there was staff turnover and so there's kind of different people in different roles now yeah and um, and by the way that's very especially after uh covid you know everybody's kind of regrouping and figuring out what they need to be doing yeah They've learned a lot yeah. of things that they need to do uh, for covid so hey yeah so i think for now this helps a lot <laughs> okay. uh i think once we start getting like further into the weeds of like okay what what do we need to have what don't we know, <laughs> uh, then we'll probably have a lot more questions at that point. Yeah, go ahead and play with all the stuff we talked about today, mm -hmm. if you would. And then if you have any questions or you need any help, feel free to reach out. We can pop open another GoToMeeting and go through it. Awesome. Uh, that's all the questions I had, Maribel. Did you have any other ones? I think that was it for me as well. OK. Well, again, you know where to find me. I'm not going to mm -hmm. hide from you, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.